I was born in Iran. I've witnessed ballistic missiles coming down. That made me think that, okay, what are the things that I would like to change? What are the things that I would like to impact? And at the end of the day, I think we need to be responsible for using any technology in a positive fashion. If there's anyone out there that could steer the thrust of technology away from our own demise and toward the betterment of humanity, this could be the guy. My name is Ali Hajimiri. I am an educator and an engineer and an inventor. Since very young age, I was really curious to find out how things work. Any kind of toy I had, I, you know, within a couple of days, it was ripped apart and opened uh, and turned, torn into pieces. And you know, my parents were not a huge fan of that. But throughout the process, I tried to then build things myself. Uh, at some point, I tried to make a laser when I was, I think, like 10 or 11, and uh, I didn't succeed. But Hajimeri made up for that failure in his adult life. Today, he holds more than 90 issued patents, and along with his tenure at Caltech, carries a reputation of making ideas that would otherwise sound like science fiction a reality. Things that I work on, or some of the inventions, if you will, uh, that we've been, have been involved in, they span a large gamut. It's lensless cameras, lensless projectors and 3D cameras, radar on a chip, self-healing circuits, handheld diagnostic devices, wireless power transfer, space-based solar power. They may appear kind of seemingly unrelated to each other, but they all rely on this underlying concept of the phase arrays. The phase arrays is basically a large number of small elements working together. Hajimiri's inspiration for phased array technology comes from an unlikely place, ants. As a child, uh, I took a big jar, of glass jar, and you know, I, I was digging through an ant, ant hill, and then I took a whole bunch of ants and just dumped them in that jar. And within a couple of days, they started building the whole nest. It was, it was really amazing because it showed how you can achieve very complex things through interactions of simple units. The phase arrays is basically the army of ants. Now instead of ants carrying dirt, imagine millions of tiny signals working in concert to send energy wirelessly. This phased array system is the basis for Hajimiri's latest and most ambitious project, collecting solar power in outer space and beaming it down to Earth. We are in the Wireless Power Transfer Laboratory and uh, we are looking at a setup for demonstration and testing of a wireless power transfer. Here you have a small version of what would be collecting power. We are basically creating a beam and focusing of the energy in this location. And what you can see is that the energy is being transferred wirelessly. And this would be the unit building block of making the space-based generator power station. This is an extremely important thing because, first of all, it gives access globally to energy and power. It doesn't introduce any greenhouse gases or any of that sort in, in the process of making of the energy. But the idea of sending power to Earth from space has some pretty high-profile detractors. Space solar power, okay? The stupidest thing ever. <laughs> Skeptics like Elon Musk believe that after multiple power conversions and the cost of launches and the sheer scale of such a project makes it far too expensive and inefficient, forever trapping it within the confines of science fiction. And if anybody should think, should like space solar power, it should be me. All right, I got a, I got a rocket company <laughs> and a solar company. <laughs> but this is of little concern to a man who has made his living defying conventional wisdom. He believes that the greatest innovations come from an active imagination. A lot of us are inspired by science fiction. I think science fiction is essential to the way of thinking about making useful and interesting things. So you start with a concept that doesn't exist, that could have been articulated in science fiction, and you try to see what can you do about that. Can you do it in an entirety? Can you do a variation of that? And that process, that's part of the creative process, right? I mean, engineering is the discipline of creativity. The key question is that how can you make it in such a way that it's feasible and also economical? And to do that, you have to take a lot of different kinds of technologies and bring them together. Like an army of ants, all working together at the unlikely intersection of science fiction and reality.
You know, nothing is done in isolation. No one person really in today, and I think ever, was doing things by themselves. Uh, you know, if, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, take your friends.